York, singer-songwriter Caroline Rose is back with her fifth full-length album, The Art of Forgetting. Caroline began their career making folk country albums, but transitioned into making indie pop records with their stellar album, Loner, in 2018. This was followed up with the album Superstar, released in 2020. Superstar was a concept album about fame, but aside from a few hits on the album, it wasn't as engaging as Loner. Loner was an incredible, heartfelt album that was cute and funny, but Superstar felt like this bloated concept that just didn't feel authentic. The Art of Forgetting continues the concept album theme like Superstar. However, this time the theme is much more personal, being about a breakup that Caroline is going through. Compared to their two previous albums, The Art of Forgetting is emotionally heavy. But even though this might be their most emotionally heavy album to date, there still is a lightness and humor to it that I can appreciate. And it still is a rewarding listen. The album begins with the song Love, Lover, Friend. This is a perfect cinematic start to this album. I have already mentioned that this album is a thematic concept album about a breakup. The lyrics on this song hint to toxic elements of this relationship as they exist on both sides, which is a nice way to preface the main action of this album. The music also conveys this overwhelming internal conflict that exists on this album. The guitar is plucked in this very cyclical fashion while the strings soar and Caroline gives this guttural yell that's also being sung. The next track on the album, Rebirth, is probably my least favorite, which is a shame for it to come this early on the album. It is my least favorite in part because of the theme of the overall album. The third track, Miami, in my opinion, would have made a better second song as it lays out the end of the relationship. Miami also gives the title of the album, The Art of Forgetting. So it really is the kind of beginning to the themes of the album. The idea of rebirth lyrically is not necessary for the album either, since its themes seem to be implicit in the entire album itself. As we will get to, Caroline becomes in some sense reborn by the end of this album. It's not even that great musically in my opinion, and tonally it sounds like the much better song The Doldrums, which appears later in the album. My final critique of this song is that it delays the emotional core of the album, which is an answering machine message left by Caroline's grandmother, or who they charmingly refer to as Mima. Mima serves this function of asking Caroline if they're okay and is checking in on them. Honestly, I feel without Rebirth, this album as a concept album would have been so much better since it would get us directly into the themes of this album. Miami is about Caroline realizing their love is not being reciprocated and how by extension this is causing a deep depression within Caroline. As the song builds, they realize that part of loving someone is learning to forget how to love them, which is a powerful and insightful reflection on the loss of a relationship. As I said before, this song really lays out the stakes of this album as Carolyn spends the rest of the album learning how to forget that love. The song has this marching quality to it, as if we're marching towards disaster of self-reflection and rediscovery. It starts off with this subtle acoustic guitar, but as the song builds, it introduces this sludgy guitar, which again conveys this sense of something terrible happening. We then of course get the voicemail message from Mima, but then we get the song, Everywhere I Go I Bring the Rain. Upon first listening to this song, I didn't immediately love it, in part because it's such a melodramatic song. I mean, everywhere I go, I bring the rain. It's almost like a, a Snoopy comic. <laughs> but after subsequent listens, it has become one of my favorite songs. It is this light acoustic indie rock song that's almost playfully melancholic. The song takes this melodramatic description of depression and plays with it in a way that is almost more insightful. 
there is, in some ways, something really ridiculous about depression that even when I struggle with it myself, you, you can be rationally aware that the depression itself is irrational. You can reflect on it and go, why am I feeling this way? But you almost just can't help it. It is in this sense that the song grew on me because I could tell that Caroline is not just moping and saying everywhere I go, I bring the rain. It is like they are reflecting on the silly nature of it, but you could still hear that it's like, even though you can see how silly it is, you almost just can't get rid of this thing. Or at least a lot of work has to go in to, to moving past it. Caroline also realizes in this song how this depression has impacted their relationships, including the one they had with their ex. With the song ending in an understanding that there, there is no running away from the pain, you need to confront it and deal with it. We then get the song The Doldrums, which is a haunting song about a dream that Caroline had. The doldrums is a nautical term that refers to the point at the equator where ships can get stuck because of the lack of wind. The song sounds very dreamlike with these weird looping effects, but also a harp. The drums are also heavy with reverb, which gives it this weird uncanny vibe. This is followed by the song The Kiss, which is the first point of moving on in the relationship. As Caroline reflects how they would do almost anything for the kiss of someone new. Of course, that can only happen if they get the energy to even open the door and go outside to reach the point of having that kiss. The music has this 80s synth vibe. It is a very soft song. And the delivery kind of reminds me of Phoebe Bridgers off her latest album, Punisher. The song also ends with this swelling, sparkly synth sound, almost like the song is imploding in on itself. It serves almost as this metaphorical rebirth or discovering what it is to love again and being completely overwhelmed by it. We then get the second voicemail by Mima, where she talks about how her cornbread really hits the spot and how Caroline really needs to, to contact her. I'll just say Mima is adorable and uh, just really makes this album great. The track Stockholm Syndrome is really interesting. It has this almost 50s or 60s lounge music vibe, but with also like an, an alt-country type flair. Lyrically, the song is kind of toxic. Caroline sings about tying up their partner until eventually they will come to love them. In other words, they hope their partner will become a victim of Stockholm Syndrome, as the title of the track is referencing. But the way it is playfully delivered over this light, lounge-style music, it, it comes across like Caroline realizes that this is toxic, that this is silly, it shouldn't be taken seriously. The song ends with a bunch of voices that are sort of clamoring for attention, and you can make out some of them saying things like, get away from me, as clearly someone in this situation would not be happy. The song that ends with this kind of realization, with Caroline singing, we are all scared of changing. Maybe it's just me. But then they realize at the very end that maybe it was their partner. It is a kind of profound self-realization that maybe all these things you were doing to try to get your partner to love you were all to make them change. And that's a very toxic way to interact with a relationship. Tell me what you want is almost the reverse of Stockholm Syndrome as we get the kind of toxicity from Caroline's ex, in that their ex seems incapable of communicating how they feel, with Caroline singing, tell me what you want. This, of course, sends Caroline into a spiral of trying to figure out what the hell is going on. The song is kind of upbeat and playful, as Caroline is trying to figure out what their partner wants, while they are simultaneously breaking down. However, the mood starts to shift by the end of the song, as Caroline comes to terms with the fact that it is all over and struggles with how to accept this and move on. They sing, do we shake hands? Do we embrace? Do we just walk away? And then the song explodes into this dramatic ending with Caroline repeating, I'm becoming someone else. As they realize that this relationship ending is destroying their concept of self. That buildup at the end gives me goosebumps every single time I listen to it. 
We then get the final voicemail from Mima saying she thinks about Caroline every day and again asks Caroline to call them. We then get the song Love Song for Myself. Much like Rebirth, I feel it's thematically not placed well on this track list. The song is about Caroline coming to terms with loving themselves. But as we will see, this is the dramatic conclusion of the end of the album, and it just feels like this song is way too premature. Unlike Rebirth, I do enjoy the song a lot as a cheeky self-love song, and I do think the album could have used another cheeky song placed here between the voicemail and the next song, which is very emotionally heavy. But lyrically, again, it just feels premature. Jill Says is the next song and is about Caroline's therapist, Jill. Most of the song seems to be Caroline going through the things that they learn through therapy, like about their attachment issues. The song, again, has this dreamlike quality that feels somewhat nostalgic, which kind of makes sense as the therapeutic session is making Caroline reflect on the past in almost a childlike manner. Halfway through the song, this idyllic nostalgic sound is disrupted by this haunting, overbearing string section, which is there foreshadowing something much more deeply emotional that Caroline needs to overcome. The climax of the song is kind of predictable in that Caroline realizes they need to let their partner go. But even though it's predictable, the weight and release is crushing. Caroline comes in, hitting the climax, singing, I'm going to miss you for a long, long time. And you could just hear how devastated Caroline is in singing that line. With the strings swelling, it is just this beautiful moment, and I tear up every single time I listen to it. We then get the closer, Where Do I Go From Here? This song is much more triumphant after going through the emotional work of the last song, Jill Says. Caroline, in this song, comes to terms with their depression as the song builds and then slows right down and Caroline, again, comes to terms with letting go. But then, the song erupts again, almost if Caroline is yelling at themselves to get back up and to keep on living. The song then finishes with Caroline repeating, Come on now, babe. Take all that pain and learn to love yourself again. It is powerful, moving, just an incredible touching end to this album. But if that wasn't enough, the album ends with Caroline finally calling their Mima. And uh, yeah, I, I cry again for the second time in this album. It is just so touching. There is a reason uh, I describe this as the emotional core of the album. Because again, as someone who struggles with depression, those people who reach out can often be a lifeline even if we don't respond right away. But it is that unconditional love that is often essential to survival, and Caroline's call in the end is an implicit thank you. I mean, an album that makes you cry twice has got to be an incredible album, right? And uh, yeah, it is. Uh, honestly, if they removed Rebirth and Love Song for myself, this would be have been another masterpiece in my opinion. I do believe though that Caroline Rose is an underrated and underappreciated artist and I would give this album a easy 9 out of 10. Have you heard of this album? Have you listened to it? Do you like it? Leave a comment down below. Do you agree with all the things that I've said? What do you think about the song Rebirth? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, yeah, thank you for listening. I hopefully will release more videos this week because uh, I'm going to try to stay on top of it a bit more. Love ya.